Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are on the planet. And welcome, welcome, welcome to Trade Day Bull versus Bear webinar with Steve Miley on the call here on Monday, the 14th of February. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. So love is certainly not in the air today, um, particularly if you look on the Ukraine-Russia uh, border. So um, that is what's really dominating headlines in here today, guys. We'll take a look at that um, and how it's impacting markets, how it impacted markets on Friday. Um, we'll take a look at um, the calendar. Um, we'll do, as usual, do the whole shape of the week. Yeah, we usually on the Monday go through, take a look at um, the major data points that are going to coming up through the week, see where the volatility is likely to lie. But clearly, um, going into this week, outside of the data points, and central bank events, um, the, all the focus is on uh, Ukraine, Russia and what's going on there. So uh, we'll talk a bit about that, but we'll definitely go through the calendar as well. Um, and then we'll take a look at the opportunities on the charts. Um, so uh, let's uh, first of all, just, you know, focus on, you know, what's really dominating markets right here now. So here, Ukraine uh, um, stocks skittled by uh, Stocks by Ukraine fears, oil scale seven year peak. So European stocks down lower again this morning. We had a big sell off on Friday. So obviously on Thursday, if you remember, CPI data came out from the US higher than anticipated, um, sent bond yields spiking higher to higher yields, lower prices, and stocks also sold off Thursday. Friday, we had a slight follow through on that. But then um, with Biden and various different political commentators highlighting the fact that there was a real threat of tension um, escalating and maybe conflict starting um, on the Ukraine-Russia border, um, we had um, um, a significant sell-off in riskier assets. So on Friday, stocks sold off, but bonds rallied. So on Thursday, bonds uh, sold off to higher yields because of this inflation data. And then bonds rebounded on Thursday, but stocks continued to go lower. Bonds went up as a safe haven. Also, gold spiking higher, as this article in here talks about. Oil's going higher because of these tensions. So oil up um, on on Friday, um, um, gold up on Friday, and gold and, and oil up again today. And bonds higher, stocks lower. And let's take a look at that on the chart. So in here. First of all, let's take a look at those. Um, let's look at the bond market first of all. So the bonds in here lower on Friday, um, excuse me, on Thursday because of CPI, and then rebounding on um, uh, on Friday because of a safe haven bid. So this is buying bond buying as a safe haven, and bonds nudging slightly higher again in here this morning. And if you look at the stock indices in here, let's start go back to the daily chart in here. So equities were lower on Thursday because of CPI, and and higher. Um, yields and then yields actually went lower, but because of the fear, because of the fear gauge in here um, of, um, of the uh, tensions between Ukraine and Russia, or Russia and Ukraine, uh, we took out this low in here, which then completes a double top pattern, which we'll see better on the um, shorter term charts. We're going here to the one hour chart, and remember we had that. See the rectangle there that kind of pivotal area we spoke about, the, the series of highs in here from the basing pattern in January and the lows here. So we get a double top high up here, high up here. Let's get rid of the Fibonacci retracement in here. And this trend line, but yeah, down through this pivotal area. So we plunge down through there on Thursday, creates a double top high, high, two highs around pretty very, very close to the same level breaks this low, accelerates down through the low, and then holds into the close. And then this morning, lower again. Market trying to rebound now, but all the risk to the downside, clearly. And this is where our any tension breaking out. Now, as I said previously, um, because of the fact we have either buy the rumor, sell the fact, or sell the rumor, buy the fact, markets react before the events, right? So this is already pricing in a negative outcome. It's already pricing in a conflict, okay? So if we get any kind of diplomatic moves positive, these markets, these risky risk markets, these riskier markets, the equity stock markets are going to rebound. Um, and equally, um, as I said to you guys before, I've done a study on this previously. When conflict usually breaks out, what we tend to see is the market is negative. So stock indices, riskier assets are sell off into the tension, into the conflict. And once the conflict breaks out, usually within a day or so, you know, it's usually within a couple of days. Pearl Harbor, it was two weeks, okay, after Pearl Harbor. But with the Iraq, the conflicts we saw in the Gulf, okay, um, they were over within um, less than 24 hours. The markets had sold off before. And then once the conflict started, once uh, the US started to launch um, uh, weapons, then um, then things uh, then started to rebound. OK, so now this may be 
different. It depends on the type of, 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 of conflict we see, right? If it's a skirmish, we don't know. Um, maybe it's going to take some retaliatory move that sees the market bottom out. But nevertheless, um, but I, you know, really, you got to say you got to play it from the short side. We took out this low. Um, we got the double top pattern, you know, lower lows and lower highs. Two very impulsive moves Friday and then again overnight. So this is on the open overnight last night. Sold off again because of inked continuing tensions. The market is trying to put a bottom in here, but I wouldn't be surprised to see further losses in here as we go into the uh, into the cash market open. And if we go into the daily on the Nasdaq, same thing. One, two. And now the Nasdaq's getting close to these lows. The, the issue for the market is if we break the lows. Okay, so we've already had the lows in here from back in um, September, broken in January. If we get a break below the January's lows, then we've got now a bear market start. You've got lower lows and lower highs, and then you've got another new lower low in here. That will be the real concern and similar in here. And obviously, uh, you know, uh, a one measure of a bear market is 20% down from the highs. But certainly if the S&P, now the S&P is still a long way from this low in here, okay? It's still a, a decent amount away. So we're trading what at the moment in here? So we are currently trading 43.75. The low in here is down at 42.12. So we're like, you know, over 100, 170 index points or something away from, from this low. <coughs> Nevertheless, We've got to watch out. You know, there is risk down to that low. Yeah. So um, not necessarily today, I'm saying, but when the conflict breaks out, if we break the low here, if the Nasdaq breaks the low in here um, when, on a breakout of any kind of conflict, then that will be a, certainly a very negative longer term signal for the markets. OK. And then you will certainly be wanting to play it more from the bear side. So that's going to be interesting to watch and, and that development there. While we'll take a look at the charts, we're going to continue on the charts and I'll, I'll come back and go through the macro. But I mean, um, really, it's it, at the moment, it's really all about um, what we're seeing here. So um, with Russia, um, Ukraine. So if we go to like a look at the oil chart, no surprises. Boom, uh, a huge move higher um, back on Friday. Another new high. We are actually setting back to so the oil market. And if we step into a 30 minute chart, you know, significant setback in oil. OK, and then, you know, significant setback, impulsive move lower and then rolling and, and back lowering again. So potential in here for oil saying, OK, we're not as concerned. So maybe in here. Oil telling us something the equity markets are not really showing us at the moment. And if you look at gold as well, gold in here had a really impulsive move higher, took out the high in here from January, getting close up here to the high that we saw from November last year. So um, but a, a slight retracement back lower there as well. And if you look at gold in here, um, a slight setback in here, you know. So if we roll back below the lows on gold, again, gold higher as a safe haven. OK, and remember, gold went higher even with when we go and look at the dollar index. So the dollar has been going higher. OK, the dollar since Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, dollar is up as a safe haven. And also because of concerns, the CPI concerns, right, um, of a more aggressive Fed. So the dollar is up on both aggressive Fed, but also as a safe haven. However, you know, normally that would be negative for gold, but gold still managed to go higher. The gold has dipped a little bit this morning. But, you know, keeping an eye on gold, keeping an eye on oil. If you're trading the equity indices, keep an eye on these markets because they are showing sometimes sign of turning in here. And although, you know, you know, I've been more um, on the bullish side trying to buy the dips in here. But in here at the moment, I'm seeing nothing in here. Like this is nothing down here on the Nasdaq. You know, this is the um, 30 minute chart or hour chart, 30 minute chart in here on the Nasdaq. The market's just had this you know, big set of Friday. OK, through this important again, through that important zone there, you know, um, hasn't had any. Didn't have any rebound after the sell-off on Friday to mark time into the close. And then overnight, we've had another push lower with tension still high. Um, and then the market's just marking time. There's no sign of this turning around. You know, we're going to have to be looking at um, downtrend lines in here. So, you know, all of these are redundant in here now. Sorry. Get rid of these old trend lines. And now we'll be looking at something more like the line from the top up here through the peak in here, which was from Friday. And then we'll extend that out. So it's a long way to get up to this trend line. Even if you take the more accelerated trend line from Friday's peak and then like this through this overnight peak in here, you know, which is not the greatest of trend lines, you know, I mean, neither of them are, are, are fantastic. But if we go and take a look at that, where's my data? Where's my tools? Gone? Lost my tools in here, guys. Ah, here we go. So if you come through, even coming down through here, 
you know, even if it breaks here, it's not a great, I mean, really it's got to get above these overnight peaks really. So like really back above 14,300, you know, for, for the NASDAQ. And if you go and look for the um, similar on the S and P, so I'm going to step that down actually. It's a one hour chart. Let's go to the 30 minute. So yeah, I'm not bullish at the moment, by the way, as you know, this is definitely setting up more negative. There definitely looks like the, the market wants to flush out to the downside again in here. Um, you know, the cash market's obviously not open even in here yet. So it wouldn't be surprised to see another leg lower. You know, they did, there was some significant liquidation, but you know, it's got to get back above here and ideally back above here, right? The overnight high, which is up at like 14, um, 14.28.0. Yeah, it needs to get back above there. So it needs got quite a lot of work to do. Sorry, not 14, 44, 44.28.0. Okay, it needs to get all the way back up there. There's some way to go, right, from where we are right here, right now. So um, still a lot of work to be done um, for, for these markets to show any kind of potential on the upside in here. Um, so let's take a look at, um, you know, what we've got. Um, so, you know, pretty much all the, the, you know, the articles, you know, Global Stop Tumble UK Intentions in here five things to, to know to start your day in here again in here tense days a weekend call between biden and vladimir putin no breakthrough russia continue tonight plans to invade and then um U us continuing to um you know stoke up stuff in here really if anything saying you know it's imminent you know um commodities are rallying on the back of that you know because of concerns um oil higher in here um, and then, um, you know, I don't think, we, you know, we have had some talk in here of, from Daily, slightly dovish talk in here from Daily, actually, um, from, uh, she's from the San Francisco um, Fed, Mary Daly. So saying that, um, you know, not looking for aggressive action, that, uh, that the, the, the action should be measured in our pace and importantly, data dependent. So a slightly more dovish tone than we've seen recently, but really not helping bonds particularly high, you know, bonds going back to higher prices, lower yields more because of the safe haven and then again focusing back on markets lower because of the tensions so yeah it's all going to be about those tensions but we do need to take a take keep an eye on the calendar um we've got the calendar here what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the forex you know the fx explaining it so you know i write this um this daily in here um and i kind of pick out the major so this weekly sorry weekly recap and outlook uh, i'm gonna go, so we've got nothing really of note today i'll go back to the calendar and zoom in but rba minutes on um on tuesday japan gdp uk employment report that could be interesting german zdw service always important but for the markets we're looking at we're really probably looking there for tuesday's us ppi data see if the ppi remember producer price index factory gate inflation is that going up at the same rate as we're seeing the um the consumer inflation data uk cpi is going to be interesting to see if uk the uk is experiencing it has been experiencing as in as aggressive um, rises as the us um, and also the uk remember already started on its rate hiking cycle um, um, has raised rates twice um, since the end of last year we get us retail sales it's a big piece of data for the us this week probably the most important data we're watching we also get canadian cpi and then the central bank side the fed the fed are in play on a wednesday evening or not in play we get the release of the fed minutes sorry so the fed minutes are a release going to be interesting to see just how hawkish or not the fed are and then moving through the rest of the week nothing really significant out of the us australian employment report thursday japanese cpi uk retail sales and canadian retail sales Let's dip into the calendar, though. Um, so in here, you can see there's nothing really of significant. Lagarde is speaking later today. We also have Bullard speaking. So watching out for those speakers. That could be interesting, but nothing really of concern to us in here um, going through the day. I say there's that UK employment report, German ZEW survey, um, EU employment report in here, uh, US PPI. So we've kind of covered most of this off already. UK inflation report on Wednesday morning, um, overnight for you guys in the US. Um, we do get in here retail sales data that's the main date the big data we're going to be watching on wednesday alongside the fed okay so if we get the fed where's the fed the fed the fed oh no it's crude oil inventories uh fed meeting minutes released there we go so we're certainly watching out for that wednesday and there's a fairly light into the week nothing really significant here jobless weekly data jobless claims building permits it's not big data it's not gonna with what's going on in ukraine russia um you know building permits is not gonna uh, impact the markets in here bullard speaking again we know bullard's a hawk and has been you know espousing that that hawkish view 
UK retail sales data on Friday. We've already mentioned that um, and Canadian retail sales data as well. And then, you know, it's light US data. So nothing really of significant note from the US at the end of the week. So we'll cover most of the data in there, but really all the focus is going to be on this situation, guys. So in here again, what it is in it, I, I would really, really stress that you're going to get big moves. You're going to get volatility trade low when you trade volatility the easiest thing to do right if you want to tr stay in the game and play um and play and, and take part yeah the easiest thing to do is just reduce your trading size you know go and trade um the micros yeah just trade really really small because you're going to get bigger moves so you're still going to get good profits yeah it might allow you to have a slightly wider stop rather than having a tight stopper and trading bigger size so reduce your trading size because you're going to get bigger volatility bigger moves and you'll still get decent profits from it yeah um during times like this you know there are opportunities to make and profit however there's also opportunities to have significant losses and obviously you, you really try to avoid that so reduce that trading size if you if you reduce the trading size and you seem to be trading really well and, that, and your system going well your strategy is going well you're, you're trading well um you've got a good gut feel for it then maybe you can slowly up the trading size but you know keep it light keep the trading size on the on the on the smaller side um during these volatile markets okay all right guys i'm gonna wrap it up there be safe out there be careful be careful in those markets they're gonna be choppy um you know these could turn around we get some kind of diplomatic solution comes and stock indices are rocketing back to the upside so uh, do keep an eye on markets. Keep your top, st your top relatively tight. Reduce that trading size. Um, and yeah, hopefully you'll have a great trading day. I'm going to say bye. And I'll be back with you and have a bull versus bear market tomorrow. Bull versus bear webinar tomorrow. Take care.